Happy Tuesday. Happy, happy fifth line day. Oh my goodness. It is a very cool day today. It is my third wedding anniversary. Woohoo! And our person that we're going to be taking a look at, thanks to you, Liu, her name is Esther Hicks. And my husband and I met each other in 2012 at a Law of Attraction conference. So this is a really special thing for me to look at her design and happy fifth line day. Thank you so much for the well wishes. It's very exciting. And not only that, um, Esther is a really fascinating woman, you know, with regards to her design. Let's go grab her, my body graph. I've got her advanced chart up as well. But um, she was one of the people that I, when I first got into human design, immediately went and looked at because she was so influential on me. You can see that she is designed to be very persuasive and influential. And this is the chart that we're going to be looking at with regards to a professional level study group. So just kind of wandering around the chart, seeing what's there, seeing if anybody has anything that they want to offer with regards to witnessing, observing her and her work in the world. You know, this particular moment in time, it was 48 is the time they have in the time 2151 in Colville. Utah. That was a long time ago. Esther is well into her um, Chiron cycle. And I, it had been years, many years since I started listening to her again. For those of you who don't know, she is a channeler. Here is her official website is abraham-hicks.com. And she channels Abraham. And she was the one, if you've ever watched that movie, um, The Secret, she was actually in the first version of the movie. They, re they removed her later on, but she is the source of all of the information of people talking about the law of attraction. She's got amazing materials out there, just a wealth of, of materials. And so since it had been a while since I'd listened to her, I've got her uh, Facebook group up, her Twitter feed, her YouTube, just kind of poking around and seeing what she's talking about. She's still talking about the same kind of thematic with regards to, you know, your vibrational energy, your vibrational being, and being able to get in touch with that. And you, and you hear her talk about your inner being, or they, I should say, because Abraham is a they. And interestingly, if we go over to her advanced chart, I just wanted to take a peek at this with you before we started analyzing to take a look and see what is her color motivation underneath. And interestingly, when you hear her talk about, you know, this powerful desire within you, oftentimes when I listen to Esther, I, I, I feel as if I'm hearing her inner being speak, you know, her inner being speak to herself and advising herself. Now, if you listen to her channeling, you'll notice that she definitely does change her, her tune slightly subject to each individual in front of her. And as a mental projector, uh, she is up on a stage and her team of people have a chair in front of her, close to her. And then the audience is much further away. So she has her space to focus on one person at a time. When you go to a law of attraction event, and I've been to many, flew over the country to follow her because I was so enamored with her and her work before human design. Um, she has this, I don't know if you would call it a, a rampage of appreciation, she might call that at the beginning of her conferences. And then people just raise their hands after her rampage is done and they come up and they speak to Esther. So my husband was one of those people. I, I woke up one day, like the day of the event itself, and I just knew I was going to meet him, capital H, my king. And I did. I met him. And this was 10 years ago. So it's a really special experience to, to witness and watch. Years later, I watched the video that one of his friends who saw him in the live stream saw the recording, I sent, they, they sent him the video and I watched and I had to laugh at their exchange because she just knew him. 
I mean, she, you could tell that she was specifically speaking to the nature of him. And that is the brilliance of a projector. Now she's a five, one, a five, one has a karmic interaction with others in this lifetime, a desire motivated five, one is a prominent leader. You can see she has part of the channel of the alpha. When I checked into her Chiron, she does have, let me just double check and make sure, just pretty sure, create new. I wanted to show you guys something really cool. I know this is a little bit of a longer story than normal, but um, let's grab her chart here for her Chiron. Yeah, there's the alpha. So this is really what she is now, you know, starting in 1998. But I had to go and look and see when was it that Esther started channeling Abraham. So I'm gonna pull up, not her Saturn return, but her Uranus opposition. Check this out. 1986 was when she first started to channel Abraham. Uranus opposition, a two four right angle cross of consciousness. Isn't that neat? So you read Abraham's newsletter every day, yeah. Isn't that neat? Oh, what else is uh, Lisa saying here? She ended up on the cutting room floor. And so she's never mentioned in the movie. They wouldn't agree to the items or the terms so that she was removed. She's been more successful, I believe, because of it. Yeah, I actually saw the original release and she was, um, you know, she's the cornerstone of all that information. Everybody else are just disciples of this woman or followers, if you will. She is designed to be someone who follows herself with regards to her process and her trajectory. And she's a possibility thinker. When you think about um, what she speaks to, how she does uh, help people see the possibilities and she's a guide of direction. Look at that. She's designed to be where there's a lot of people around her, fourth line, right, as a nodal environment. And she's got this. Look at this nodal configuration. Now, the nodes are pretty special. When you're looking at an analysis, there is a different way that we um, know about nodal environments, which are oppositions in the wheel you never really quite leave the south node behind. It's, it's a solid configuration. It's a definition, you know, with regards to how often that happens. It's only three channels that create definition in the nodes. So this is a brilliant individual and she's got a conjunction here of the moon as well. So somebody who can really explain things. Have you noticed? Have you heard? Yeah, I've seen her live many times too in different stages. Um, even flying to her because it was so, so near and dear to my heart to be able to listen to her. I love her rampages of appreciation. Her, she basically talks people into a different state of being. This is the um, internal, you know, our own individual magnetic monopole, the location of the magnetic monopole, gate two. And so she's providing direction for the directionless. How? as a pure positive frequency and emotional um, advisor. And she's not emotional herself, but she really speaks to the nature of the wisdom of the emotional, of the emotional system. And there you have it in her Chiron. You can see that she's got a lot of potential impact. Doesn't change her type, doesn't change her authority, but a lot of, of emotional sensitivity and openness to empowering other individuals. Look at this amazing chart that we have here, as far as the mutation that she herself has spiritually gone through in order to be an outer authority for other people. Now, personally for me, I recognize and validate that her advice is very precise with an individual in front of her where she gives them, I don't know if it's aligned with their design, but it's definitely not just, you know, generalizations as she does in the very beginning or any of her tapes or books and such. There is a core message that you can see she's talking about with regards to individuality. Remember I said that this is one solid unit here. This is a stage upon which 
the backdrop of her life is set where individuality is exalted. This is the only channel that has no mirror in the individual circuitry. There is no mirror for this channel. That's why it's called genius freak. And she will be dismissed as a freak, as, as many of you know, if you're not into channeling and you don't believe that she gets voices from non-physical, you know, people from the past. I, I cannot recall exactly who she said they were, but I think it is um, the people who have gone. They're not currently physical. And Mari is sharing. I love her story of how the voice of Abraham entities first came through. It was her drawing letters in the air with her nose. Yes, thank you for that. I remember now. No gate 44. Jerry would translate the messages until it got so much. Eventually, Esther asked Abraham to please speak. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And now you see all she has to do is take a deep breath and she finds herself in that place and state. The voice changes slightly. The mm, words flow differently. Such a powerful voice. Have you, mm, if you pay attention to and you've listened to anything that I've, I sent a, a video and maybe you might've checked her out before. She's very, quite popular uh, with regards to people into law of attraction are open to channeling if they know where the source came from. And Ra hated the word channeler. He did not consider himself to be a channeler. But there are some rumors out there that he channeled human design. Another thing that we might really focus on is the fixedness in the design, because we know that those are um, very strong activations. And here's the core essence of who this person is with regards to what she's here being receptive to and also broadcasting because this is part of her core essence. The understanding that doubts are necessary and of value and sometimes doubting one's very process despite understanding. This is would have been the cross of consciousness should have would it have been uh, a few days earlier. We can see it's the left angle cross of dominion. It has very strong, powerful leadership within the incarnation cross itself. So we can see a repeating pattern because the third color motivation, desire motivation people are leaders. Also, her strongest activation, and that is on the unconscious design side, the earth, her strongest activation is about education, canvassing, the line of canvassing. Is she not an educator, an infotainer, you could say as well. She so much teaches about ideas, you know, big, beautiful ideas that she shares, things that are going to bring peace into individuals' lives and peace into the collective journey with regards to advising people on the wisdom of emotions and feeling a little better now and feeling a little better now and feeling a little better now where she's having this uh, fixedness with the 63 is the fact that we have the sun there as well as her conscious Mars. Do you see that? I'm just going to pull this over here. Sun and Mars. And that, those are the fixing planets for her to swing it to the juxtaposition. When we say the word juxtaposition, it simply means that there is an extreme expression of that line value. So the understanding that doubts are necessary and of value is one side of the coin in her expression of her unique message in order to help people understand, because this is a channel of logic and it is about providing inspirational questions, as well as her immature energy dynamics, Mars, that gives her the ability to provide answers. So let's go look at that Mars irresponsibility, the general refusal to apply oneself diligently when one can get by with much less effort. Is that a wisdom potential or not? That is so definitely one of the things that she teaches too. You can hear her wanting people to relax, get into the vortex, she calls it. Vortex in human design terms right here. Here's the vortex with regards to this powerful flow 
of energy sucking one into your direction, the higher self, you know, with regards to that magnet. She talks about you are magnetic beings. Where is the primary magnetic monopole? Right there. She's an influencer of direction of the self. <clears throat> translating a formula for success in a unique way. Absolutely. Translating. Translating. She has no idea where this comes from, right? With her conscious personality has no idea about the unconscious definition with regards to how it works, when it's going to pop up, what it's going to say. As somebody with an unconsciously defined throat as well, I know what it feels like to have something, an energy speaking through you and your mind having no idea what's about to come out of the mouth. So this right here really is about walking that path of difference and evolving she is here to help bring forth the mutation out of limitation you can hear her talk to um you know the, that passivity wanting to people to relax in their bodies and that is one of the things that she's here for speaking of success somewhere in my research um, i don't know how old this particular um number or calculation is from, or even, even if it's very valid or, you know, real, but somewhere it said that she, her net worth of her company was $10 million. And though, you know, we, as everyone who is learning about human design, we know that money is not the whole point, but money is one of the things that she does teach about. Here is the desire that is learning how to make money or have money flow, energy. It's simply energy. It's the swell of energy. That's what desire motivation is. But on this physical plane, we translate that into money. And here she is educating us about the stream of capitalism. How do we have more on the material plane? She also has a couple of third lines within her design. So profit potentials, getting people out of stress and pressure by standing together with them to help them find the higher purpose of life. Uh, her unconscious energy dynamics, also about breaking down barriers in order to achieve union with people. So with regards to large groups of people, she has activations that feed her into those large groups. But you see that she takes herself away from the room. If you've ever been in a lecture with her, she doesn't get there until right before she starts to talk. She takes her breaks away from people. When I was uh, visiting, that was about um, in hotel rooms, but she would travel in her RV so as not to have to, you know, fly everywhere and be bombarded by all those energetic frequencies. She's right. Everything in our universe is vibrational. And look at the base. That is sound. And look at how many fives she has. I think I counted them and there were nine fives with regards to line value. And if you were to now add in, besides all the fives, add in the sixes, add in the fours, we see a woman who has a lot of transpersonal knowledge to share, right? With regards to how powerful, powerful this energy potential is. See that voice? Mercury unconscious is the voice. She's got it in the pure power. Yeah, the gate of power with a message to share. And so good for a 512 in and of itself. What is so good, Mel? Would you like to share? Yeah, sure. I just meant in the sense of her presence on stage and off stage that she mm -hmm. goes in, she does her thing, and then she leaves. Absolutely. Yes. She's not there to schmooze and hang around and, you know, have people suck on her energy. Although she may have done that on occasion, um, I, I believe now it's, I heard her recently because I went and listened to one of her, two of her videos yesterday. And one of them recently was um, Abraham saying that Esther agrees to channel if something like three hours a week. If that's not a projector, you know, cascading, cascading, that's not the word I was looking for. 
skating, <laughs> cruising along, you know, resting on their laurels or easing their way through life. I don't know what is three hours a week and you got $10 million business. Woohoo! Success for sure. Sweet. And if you listen to her voice, it is sweet. Now there are some places, if you listen to older videos, it's a little bit more of a screech, but you can tell, you can feel when she comes from that place of calm and calm is her determination and her cognition is outer vision. Oftentimes you see channelers with their eyes closed, not Esther. Esther opens her eyes when she channels, she opens her eyes. She allows herself to focus and she, you hear her talking about focus, focus being such a powerful thing for her, her other Jupiter down here in the root center or sacral center pointed at the root. So we can see very strong logic within her design, very strong leadership potentials within her design, helping her advise others to be empowered. Now, I don't want to go too far into the theory of what she teaches. I want to come back to the chart. So we're going to keep working with what we see there and start to weave keynotes. If I were to point your attention at something that is deeply hidden from Esther, what would you say about what she offers to the collective? Is she paid as an influencer of someone who can provide not just answers, but what's the word I'm looking for? Depth. Yes, the gate of depth. Thank you. Depth, depth, depth. Part of her hidden illusion, art, spirituality, and influence with regards to her expression of solutions on the material plane. You can hear her be very practical. You hear her talk about, let's bring it back to what's practical. And here's the awareness that depth and its possible expression will face restrictions with a resulting taste for short-term projects. It's in the fourth line in both, okay? So sometimes those long-term projects will be frustrated in restraint. Yeah, feeling limited, frustrated, stuck. One of those things she's here to be learned to be very wise about and advise others on. When we look at an undefined anything, this is an undefined sacral as an example, these are wisdom potentials, little hooks for others that she advises them with and on. So her Venus values and relating the mores, immaturity, learning about, listen to this, the unrestrained acceptance of guidance, unrestrained acceptance of guidance. She is listening to herself talk to get that guidance. Isn't that beautiful? The energy and potential for individual mutation. Energy and potential that is conditioned by others leading to instability. But check this out when we go to her Chiron return. Her Chiron return. There is the full channel of mutation. There is the spiritual, you know, limitation and mutation what created by her transit and also her Saturn personality. Saturn in the Chiron return is in the same line value as her Venus. Do you see that? So bringing, bringing order out of the old, bringing forth something new in this time, at this stage, the rest of her life. Succeeding where others fail. Charisma, busy in the now, sensitivity, synthesis, openness, social or not, empowerment. This channel is the only channel that can change the way the entire collective world sees themselves, sees each other, sees the world. It is a mutative voice that she has. Whoops. So going back to this over here, check it out. Her mutative voice, remember how I, I touched on it earlier? The resistance to release power other than when necessary and the discomfort with the need to always release power. This is a voice that is powerful in its message for others on how to manage 
or guide their energy. She is an advisor who can structure unique concepts, ideas, and logic, providing questions that are inspirational, that help people understand or recognize, know their own inner truth. She's influential in that. She's here to ground her questions, the logic, the doubts, and helping people through confusion. And she does that with this powerful voice that advises other people on how to use their power. Where's your power now? Isn't that beautiful? She talks about it's now, the wisdom on the other side. The power is right now. Here in this voice, her speaking her truth as an empowered individual who can, in her persuasiveness, did you see how many fives? That's a lot of fives. If we go and add on the Chiron, way more fives, you know, to be a leader based on other people recognizing and inviting her to be an influential um, voice that is definitely part of her gig, you could say, because there's the influence, particularly being sensitive to other people's needs or wants. Oh, people want so much. Their needs and wants, keeping them out of the vortex, help them feel a little better so that they're not holding themselves in vibrational frequency away from what their inner being is ceaselessly and endlessly calling them towards. All of us have the rail car or the street car, as Ra would call the gate to. All of us have an inner mm, compass. Some of us, it's a process of hearing ourselves speak, mental projectors. Some of us, it's a process of feeling into a specific center of the body, which shows up in different ways. So she having the ability to be influential with regards to having a platform for her voice, Mercury, okay? Political sensitivity to the needs of society and a potential to insensitively take advantage of the needs of society. What are the needs? Everybody's looking for energy. Esther is a non-energy type. She's a awareness type. She's here to be wise about all of these things here. Not identifying with those things as something wrong, bad, missing, broken, but finding herself speaking to the nature of her own truth and other people following, following because she is a desire motivated dominion, cross of dominion. What else do we have? Ah, the 26 and the 33 are things that I really want to speak to. We can add the 11 into that and the nine, because what I've just highlighted for you are aspects that she has either undefined or defined that are within the memory circuit. Memory circuit people have a powerful, hmm, we could say impact with the fifth line. Here, it's first line, and this is the core essence of her unconscious son. Ooh, I missed something. Mel is sharing. I'm going to put my chat closer so I can see it. Amazing that the 34 speaks to the elimination of resistance because that's what she teaches in her own way. Absolutely. I'm, so, I'm, gl I'm glad you saw that too, Mel. It's so much fun to see somebody who is operating in alignment. She's hearing herself talk. She's not going outside for somebody else's validation or approval. She's allowing her herself to speak from within. You know, the energetic frequency, the availability to be yourself. I hear her say that all we want for you is to be yourselves. <laughs> you know, and when she says we, you know, the 45 is the royal we. It speaks with we. And here's that. You're unusual. You're honest. This is where you're weird, different, freaky. People think you're weird. <laughs> A material direction that serves the outsider. Reconsideration, the line of reconsideration, exaltation. She's learning about being an outsider who can admit that its prior rejection was an error and will generally be accepted into the gathering, conjunct with her earth. There she is educating the tribe, 
the global human family, really, because she's got followers all over the world. That 4323 is the loudest. Absolutely. Imagine if all 4323s spoke what they heard like she does. Oh my goodness, Mariah, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, because this is the internal voice. Yeah, very loud internal voice. Same thing with 6124, but this one now, uh, I too have heard the voices. And sometimes when I'm talking to you, it's like there's a word that pops up and I take that word because I can hear it, literally hear it inside of my head. And this is the word that comes out to you. So with regards to her education of us as a tribe, if you're on her fractal, you know, you love her, you love her voice. You love how you feel when she's speaking to you. You feel like everything's okay. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> everything's okay. Because you can feel her calling you towards that higher vibrational state of being where everything really is okay. Mm, so beautiful. Okay, I was gonna go to the 26 because this is the power, this is ego power, willpower, right? The egoist, that's where her sun shines. The egoist, the power to be able to change people's experiences of the past through the memory. This is a memory control gate. That is what she is good at. Have you seen her have somebody come up who's all a mess and have this crying and um, upsetness and blame, shame? She definitely teaches you about the blame game um, and how not to get caught up in that trap. But to be able to, let, she'll say, let's soothe this here. And she'll reframe. This is the gate. I, I call it reframing. She'll reframe your negative and false belief systems about yourself to help you feel better. Yeah. So that you can get into the vortex, find your own vortex. Oh, it's so cool. And she provides powerful focus, really powerful focus, power to focus and bring value to concentration. The trust that detailed adherence will lead to fulfillment. This is the line of faith with regards to her focus, that potential can be fulfilled through a detailed attention to all pertinent aspects is a truth of this gate nine. And that's where her Jupiter is. That's what she teaches. She teaches you to focus, to pivot. Instead of focusing on what you don't want, focus on the thing that makes you feel better. So if we could translate that into human design terms, instead of focusing on the bitterness, you know, focus on the bitterness, try to fix the bitterness, try to solve the bitterness. That's not going to cut. It. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to focus, focusing on the anger, focusing on the frustration, operating out of integrity with your design, not going to get you where you want to go and everything that you want in this life. She talks about want a lot, desire, you know, it's over here in the vortex, your higher self. Whether you have a two or not, whether you have a defined 14 two or not, all of us have a magnetic monopole. It's just that we're not consciously aware of it drawing us along our path and our trajectory in space. Let's look at the 33 because I love this 33. This is my Saturn. This is her Pluto. Her Pluto, look at the Pluto within the definition. Okay, and that means it's a very powerful draw or pull. You know, this definition has so much depth and transformation. When you hear her share her voice of, I remember, this is the line of disassociation. It's fixed. No, it's not fixed. Different chart I was looking at. The ability to let go and retreat to enjoy privacy, the inability to completely let go. The voice of memory. She has two of the three stop codons in our genetics. The buck stops here. Esther will tell you will teach you, will train you, will advise you, will guide you to your success of being who you are, because that is the path she walks. And that is what she's calling you towards. Prepaving. Lisa is saying, Melanie is saying, fascinated by the wisdom potential of the 10 and 20 and 57. Her teachings, how one's behavior in the present moment is what leads to a better tomorrow 
I forget what she says, but it's like paving the path moment by moment and getting into the vortex. Yeah. Wisdom, pre-paving. Thank you for sharing that. There are so many little nuggets and gems that she teaches that we could easily translate over into, hey, <laughs> get your mind out of your... <clears throat> And go towards what feels better. What feels better is being yourself. She calls it launching rockets of desire when you see what you don't want. And so then you know what you do want. And that launching of the rocket of desire is she, she, they, I should say, they, Abraham, they talk about it as if, you know, we don't want you not to have a beautiful life. We want you to have everything you came here for, but you didn't come here for a perfect experience. There's all this co-creating that is going on, she says, as in the dance back and forth of manifestation. She is here with some powerful manifesting traits. Let's go look at the 12. The 12 in her Uranus, unconscious. So this is movement, okay? Movement, caution the gate of standstill in Uranus, which is unusualness, chaos, and innovation, the quality of restraint and the importance of meditation and inaction in confronting temptation. So this is the line of purification, rigorous withdrawal from negative influences. Bingo. The expression of discipline, social caution, or caution that manifests as boredom and the desire, express desire for stimulus. So do you hear when she talks about, <laughs> there's a funny, funny video. I wish I'd have posted it for you. There's a woman who's taking her videos and turning them into cartoons. Haven't really watched the cartoons much. I'm not as interesting and fascinating as watching Esther herself, but there was this one where <laughs> she was going off on uh, how, how this person was complaining and complaining and complaining about another person. If you'd be different, I'd feel okay. You know, instead of focusing their attention <laughs> on the thing that bothers them that they can't change, withdraw from that, focus your attention elsewhere. Yeah. So this unusualness of expressing what I can do, I can change my focus. If I feel myself getting into the pitfalls of anger, frustration, bitterness, disappointment, instead of believing the mind's story, turn your attention elsewhere. Think of the possibilities. That's what Esther teaches. Lisa says, I do it all the time. She had a post, notes with Abe quotes all over her house years ago, seven years ago. It helped her change her thinking. It equates to staying out of the mental game of the not self. Exactly. My point exactly, Lisa. That is my point. Every time your mind is thinking about something in a skewed way, your body reacts negatively. Yeah. With regards to how dare they, I bet they, why it isn't this different than because, because, because all of these different little blah, blah, blahs that we believe the voice inside of our head that is ourselves. And we think that there's something wrong with us because we can't fix what we don't like and blah, 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 all of that stuff. Let's look at her sevens because there are a couple. Oh, and I forgot to mention the four. Let's go back to that, okay? When we have the four up there, I didn't mention the unconscious Saturn. But look at the other Pluto. We looked at the Pluto here. And that 33 is part of her expression of remembrance, the voice of I remember. So when you hear her tell us little stories that teach, that's her and her wisdom. Uh, now, Pluto, truth, transformation, and psychology, the army. Here we have the line of the Democrat, the ability to lead by ser serving the will of the majority, the capacity of the self to lead when chosen. And on the flip side, once chosen to feel superior to those who chose them. That is her unconscious transformational truth. Now, what's conjoined there is a Saturn, Saturn in the line five, which is the general and she is, it's one of the roll gates, a general, as in she rises to the occasion. I remember hearing her, Abraham, tra uh, channeling, she channeling Abraham. And Abraham says, Esther says, why is it that I always rise to the occasion? Right here. 
she is somebody who rescues, leads, fixes things in times of crisis. This is what they're here for. Five ones, five twos. But the five personality is here to provide practical provisions in times of crisis. You see so many fives in her design. She has so much to offer with regards to a message that is unique and different. Fifth line being the finish of the differentiation of the hexagram lines because a sixth line is a line of transition. It is not part of the hexagram. So where she might be punished if she is not obeying her law of those expansive teaching philanthropists, teaching philosophic and humanitarian ideas or giving away ideas out of a sense of insecurity. How many ideas did she give off that other people made money from? The secret, all of those experts inside of the secret teaching law of attraction that she you know, brought to the table where she will feel punished if she is not operating in alignment and only if the Saturns leave you alone, if not. But here she will have the line of seduction is over there, the line of general. The capacity of the self through its role to attract loyalty and the lack of loyalty when the self insists on isolation. Leadership whose authority must be absolute and is sanctioned in society, by society, in times of crisis. Crisis knowledge at a price. Now, oh, I got to come back here, okay? But check this out. I want you to see. In her Chiron return, Look at the 34. I'm going to read it for you. Okay. Her Jupiter, unconscious Jupiter. The realization that knowledge, both covert and esoteric, is necessary if one is to prepared, be prepared for crisis and challenge. Crisis knowledge that is available to others for a price. So many people come to Esther for help when they're in crisis about emotions, to find abundance, in order to be empowered, to be supported, to find the abundance of spirit within. Look at what that line value is up there. Gate 55, line five. Gate 55, line two. So just kind of peeking over and seeing, oh my goodness, so much fun to see how she is sharing things. Oh, I see more chats. Kentaro is saying, I believe she used the term segment intending at some point. Absolutely. Where you chunk your intentions for shorter periods of time, one piece at a time, very much based in the present. Absolutely. And my friends, this 4323 is the perfect guide for those very quick to manifest, pure manifesting generators because of how close they are in the wheel to each other, oppositions in the wheel. They're just um, spaced out here. I'll show you. View. Right, Mandala. Spaced by the eight and the 14. There's the 4323, and here's the 2034. So genetically speaking, they're very close to each other, and they are the natural, perfect guides for most of the planet that are manifesting generator, because most manifesting generators that you find will be 3420s, because there's an opposition in the wheel, the thing that makes us human. Yeah, we're manifesting generator. The thing that we're all moving towards with regards to the background frequency changing. Segment intending, little step-by-step -step guidance along the path of feeling better. Yeah, providing solutions to people who are desperate for help, you know, really looking to feel better. I know I was much helped by listening to Esther. Now let's go over to the four, gate four, line five, up here inside of definition. This is the line of seduction. All fives, very seductive with the quality of their voice. And <clears throat> you can see that she's got a five there as well in the voice, literally in the voice. But here, allowing others to assume responsibility as a shield against potential punishment the gate of formalization, youthful folly. This is one of the things she's learned in her life. The potential to succeed through the understanding of others, bingo. 
the potential for cynicism that always comes from having to acknowledge the understanding of others. Yep, that too. You hear her speak to her awareness of the other person's understanding. You can hear her say, I know, I don't know. Yeah, we understand. Do you hear her say that? We understand. God, I love her voice. So empowering to listen to some people who've got it on track, on path, on purpose. Speaking to the nature of being, being yourself. Melanie is, is saying she is great at not getting drawn into the dramas and emotions of others. That restraint is palpable. She just helps them refrain. Absolutely. Recognizing in her sensitivity that their emotions are not her problem, not her own, and advising the wisdom, guiding people towards more calm. Can you feel the calm just oozing off of her when she is in flow? speaking in flow. That is her determination, outer vision, and calm. It's a very, very special thing to look at somebody who is succeeding and who does, whose energetics does feel sweet. And yet operating in alignment means she's not out there in the public eye all the time. And she only gives you that shield, you could say, of Abraham. Cognition, meditation. Her sense on the conscious side is meditation. Uh, her yes, her cognition that, is outer vision. Oh, no. Yes, yes. But mm -hmm. I, what I remember what she says, mm -hmm. uh, she said first mm -hmm. time when she entered in uh, alignment with uh, her inner uh, voice, her inner mm -hmm. being, mm -hmm. it was a short meditation which was given by Seth. Mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. another uh, channeler mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it uh, for that reason i said meditation it was something very important for her some something inside of her the vision inside mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that she does talk about meditation as a way to help people get into the vortex and out of you know the loud yammering blah blah blahs of the mind now, we know that defined head ashnas really have a, a challenge with meditation. And I remember hearing um, Abraham talk about Esther, about it took her, sometimes it takes her 10 or 20 tries to get into <laughs> meditation, because this is a very loud internal mind to, to try and quiet that mind. Ooh, challenging. Thank you for bringing that up. Because medita meditation is one of her conscious, conscious senses. Mm. I feel like I'm basking in the beauty of appreciation for this wonderful human being who in her own way is teaching people to be in alignment with self, selfhood. Yeah. Now, if we talk about the not self, we could do all kinds of, you know, keynoting about what the mind and who it thinks it is pulls her out and away from her own truth. But for me, it's way more fun to analyze what is actually there. And I want to go and look at the personality moon because this is their conscious focus. So we have here very strong because not only is it defined, but it's also resonating with her color motivation the line of research with regards to the mysteries in life. Capacity of concentration to explore the depths of inner truth and maximize its application to fundamental principles. She has the pressure to know the fundamental principles, and that is one expression of her focus. How she's here to be influential about the mysteries of life, externalizing occult knowledge. On the flip side, where the tendency to expansion and integration leads to involving others in the research and may end in a diversity of confusing applications, the illusion that collaboration will enhance inspiration. And so if you go and watch The Secret, I started turning it on last night. I could not. I could not. It was its frequency. It was so misaligned. It, but those people, when you watch them speak, the human beings that are, um, oops, internet connection is unstable. I'll wait. Very windy here. 
there we go. So if you watch those beings and you hear them talk, you can feel the frequency, whether or not, I mean, I, I can, I don't know if you can, <laughs> I'm a fifth uh, tone underneath. So feeling cognition, you can feel when something's off, you can see it on the face. You can see the insistence, you know, so many people arguing, demanding that they're right with regards to, you know, all of the 70% of the population, my friends, undefined in the head center. Therefore, 70% of the population, if operating out of integrity, out of alignment, finding the inspiration of the other, and then attempting to uh, argue that they know better than the person who actually broadcasts the message. Yeah. So this is where, instead of one of the things she teaches, instead of trying to be right, why don't you try to feel better? Instead of arguing, instead of fighting, just feel better, feel better now, feel better now. And in this now, and in this next now, that is a big, big wisdom here to get rid of those fears that plague humanity. All right, last call, anything else? Oh, Natalie's here. Happy birthday, Natalie. <laughs> and if there's anything else anyone would like to ask, say, or share, now's the time. I hope you enjoyed that. Tomorrow, oh, is it? Okay, happy solar return then, honey. <laughs> solar returns, so much fun. Mm, this one. Moon, since nobody has anything, we'll do one more. The moon breakthrough insights. Here we have actualization and centering that in breakthrough naturally establish both internally and externally a new order, unique knowing that is both personally and collectively of value. That is her unconscious driving force to advise through these breakthrough insights when asked recognized and invited people are paying good money to come and listen to her talk yeah so the value of knowing is more important than other aspects of the life at times expressing her knowing through structuring her logic to teach her ideas this is the design of esther x aka abraham abraham thank you so much for your gift in the world you can, you can hear in my voice how excited and happy I am to have had this chart to look at. Thank you so much, Iolio, for the opportunity to share and to bring this to the table for all of us to look at. This is a being that is fun, fun, fun to watch. All projectors <laughs> love geeking out about other people's designs. And the mental projector is the projector's projector. So much fun to watch mental projectors on track and on path and on purpose and the sweetness of their success. You're very welcome. Take care, my friends. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.